Hello, uh, welcome in the 17th lecture of convective heat transfer. In our last few lectures, we have discussed about convection inside a duct. Uh, now here, we will be discussing in this lecture, we will be discussing about uh, convection between two parallel plates. Okay? And uh, we will see that uh, due to temperature boundary condition, uh, specific temperature boundary condition, how convection currents can be generated. Okay? Uh, so, the topic comes uh, under the purview of uh, Rayleigh Bernard convection. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing about uh, Rayleigh Bernard convection. Okay? Uh, uh, so, let me first tell you that uh, what we will be discussing in this lecture uh, in a brief. Uh, so, uh, first we will be establishing the convection between two large parallel plates, which is essential for Rayleigh Bernard convection, large parallel plates. Okay. Then we will be discussing or we will be deriving rather the basic state and disturbed state. So, I will show you in case of uh, parallel plate and constant temperature boundary condition, there can be stable situation as well as unstable situation. So, whenever we have unstable situation, there can be uh, uh, cases where uh, unsteadiness um, can be achieved. So, in those cases, we need to observe that after basic state, disturbed state is going towards instability or not. Okay. So, we will be finding out basic state and disturbed state equations along with the corresponding boundary conditions. Okay. Uh, we will also uh, do uh, analysis of uh, stability uh, by using normal mode uh, equations okay, and discuss about uh, temporal as well as spatial stability. Okay. And uh, towards the end, we will discuss about critical Rayleigh number uh, below which you will be finding out always system is stable and uh, neutral stability. Okay? So, neutral stability curve also we will be uh, defining. So, first let me give you the idea where uh, Rayleigh Bernard convection happens. So, uh, this is the case, uh, let us say you are having two plates okay, in uh, uh, vertical orientation. Uh, so, G is acting in the downward direction. So, this is the first plate let us say uh, situated at Z equals to 0, Z bar equals to 0 and here we are having another plate, parallel plate, long plate okay, in the third direction it is very long having z bar is equals to d let us say. So, the gap between two plate is actually kept as d and uh, uh, for, uh, consider, for our uh, case let us consider the bottom plate is having constant temperature T naught and whereas, the top plate is having constant temperature T 1. Okay. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, there uh, can be a uh, hydrostatic case that means, whenever uh, there is no flow. So, okay, so no inflow is here. Uh, you can see over here no flow. So, in the pre, in the normal situation, there will be hydrostatic case. Okay. So, in hydrostatic case, we will be finding out no flow means no velocity. So, V equals to 0 okay. and uh, this V is nothing but the uh, vector velocity. Okay. So, U plus V plus W all are 0 actually. Then in the energy equation, if we put this V equals to 0, we can simply get alpha delta square T is equals to 0 because this side which is convection side as there is no velocity, so convection will not be present. So, you can find out it is dominated by conduction and ultimately the temperature profile comes as linear 1 C 1 Z bar plus C 2. Okay. So, uh, um, if you see the due to this temperature profile, if you find out what will be the density field, because as you are having temp different temperatures in both the plates. So, you will be finding out this linear uh, temperature profile um, in the fluid between two plates will be giving uh, variable density. So, the density field will be varying in this fashion rho is equals to rho naught into 1 minus beta uh, into T minus T naught, which is famous Businet's approximation. Okay. Uh, in a similar fashion, here let us see two different cases. First case is uh, let us say the plate is heated from top. Okay. So, uh, let us consider the uh, upper plate which is having temperature T 1 is higher compared to the lower plate. Uh, here we have considered T naught, uh, but let us say here uh, this one is T 2. Okay. So, this T naught and T 2 both are same. So, we have considered the upper plate temperature T 1 is higher than lower plate temperature T 2. Okay. So, obviously, as per this linear profile, we will get a linear temperature variation like this 
whereas uh, uh, higher temperature will be attached with the upper plate and lower temperature will be attached with the lower plate. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you see uh, this one density field, so it is having a minus sign over here. So, uh, if we are having higher temperature, so we will be having lower density and it will be also a linear profile as T is linear. So, we can get the density field will be also linear having uh, lower density at the upper plate which is at higher temperature and having lower uh, having higher density at the lower plate which is at the uh, lower temperature. Okay. So, due to this minus sign in the Boussinus approximation the uh, nature of the linearity uh, changes the slope of the linear curve uh, from uh, T to rho uh, changes. So, this is the case where we are having hydrostatic situation. Okay. Con conduction is mainly dominated to generate this kind of temperature profile inside the fluid. But if the situation alters, situation alters means let us say the case 2 we want to see now where T1 is actually uh, less than T2. Okay. So, upper plate is having lower temperature uh, compared to the bottom plate. Okay. So, in this case you will be finding out once again to sustain this one at the beginning in the hydrostatic case in order to sustain this linear temperature profile we will be having temperature profile like this. The lower temperature is attached with the upper plate and higher temperature is attached with the lower plate okay. and it is linear in nature. So, uh, to once again satisfy Boussinus uh, approximation, we will be having density field like this, uh, which is just opposite in nature. That means, higher density is attached with the lower temperature plate, upper plate, and lower density is attached with the higher temperature plate or bottom plate. Okay. Now, uh, this situation is actually not stable. Whereas, the previous situation where we are having lower density in the attached with the upper plate was actually stable, but here you will be finding out that uh, no fluid at higher density can stay on top of uh, lower density fluid. So, they it will be having some tendency uh, to come in the downward side, okay, which will be generating some sort of uh, uh, flow velocity in between two plates. Okay. So, this is actually unstable density field and it will be stratifying. Okay. So, stratifying means the, there will be uh, current generated from the upper plate to lower plate uh, to uh, accommodate uh, uh, this higher density fluid in the lower side and lower density fluid in the higher side. Okay. And if you allow this type of flow uh, for a certain amount of period and if the situation is becoming stable, then ultimately you will be finding out it is being stratified and after stratification density field will be homogeneous sort of thing like this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this uh, situation actually we are going to see and uh, this unstable density field will be generating a convection current in between the plates which is actually called Rayleigh Bernard convection. Okay. So, let us see this in detail uh, what are the uh, equations of this type of convection and how that can be solved. Okay. Uh, to go ahead first we will be seeing that what are the necessary equations we are having. Uh, remember we had the coordinate planes x bar, y bar and z bar. Okay. I have shown you in the previous slide x bar, y bar and z bar respectively. So, this is the continuity equation. Later on let us see the momentum equations, three momentum equations we will be having x direction, y direction and uh, z direction. So, in x and y direction as the uh, plates are kept actually uh, vertically away from each other. So, you can find out that uh, no buoyancy term is present in the x and y direction. Simply we are having inertia and then pressure gradient and subsequently viscous terms. Okay. So, x momentum equation is involved with u, y momentum is equation is involved with v. Okay. But in case of z momentum equation uh, along with inertia, pressure gradient and viscosity term, we will be having uh, uh, buoyancy term also because we are having density gradient. Okay. So, using Boussinus approximation we can write down the uh, buoyancy term in this fashion g beta t minus t naught. Okay. This you can get once again from your fluid mechanics knowledge. Okay. And uh, finally, if we see the energy equation, so we will be having convection is equals to alpha into conduction. So, left hand side is convection, right hand side is conduction. So, these are the sets of equation which we will be using for uh, 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 solving the Rayleigh Bernard convection. Okay. Uh, let us also see that how we can non dimensionalize these situations. So, as we are having uh, uh, distance between the plates as d, so that we can take as our length scale definitely. So, what we have done x 
y and z all are actually non dimensionalized based on d ok. So, the dif distance between two plates ok. For temperature definitely we are having uh, upper plate temperature minus lower plate temperature. So, we are taking that one T naught minus T 1 rather lower plate temperature minus upper plate temperature as our uh, temperature scale. So, temperature is being non dimensionalized to theta as T minus T naught by T naught minus T 1 ok. So, ultimately we get T is equals to T naught plus T naught minus T 1 into theta ok. Now, uh, let us uh, try to see that what happens for the velocity. Now, as we do not know what is the predominant velocity which uh, was actually uh, known in case of your pipe flow or flow over a um, flat plate. Uh, so, here uh, what is the velocity scale that is not known. So, we have to find out what is the velocity scale. So, for the time being let us consider some arbitrary uh, uh, velocity scale we are considering which is nothing but u naught. So, u bar, v bar and w bar all are actually being non dimensionalized by u naught ok uh, to uh, give rise u, v and w ok. In the same fashion we do not know what is the pressure also. So, we uh, actually take some non dimensionalized pressure uh, p as p bar by p naught ok. So, p naught also we need to evaluate ok. Now, uh, to non dimensionalize the time we are having over here t uh, equals to t bar uh, by some time scale. So, time scale we are evaluating from uh, uh, your distance between the plates what amount of time it takes a fluid takes uh, to cover the distance between the plates with velocity u naught. So, d by u naught is nothing but the uh, uh, time scale. So, we have obtained t equals to t bar by d by u naught ok. So, with this uh, non dimensional parameters if we proceed further then obviously, first let us look at the energy equation. So, in the energy equation you see in the convection side uh, u naught delta t by d will come out ok. So, this t will give you once again d by u naught. Uh, so, this uh, u naught by d will come theta will uh, give delta t which is nothing but t naught minus t 1 and uh, the uh, special terms in the convection side obviously, x, y and z they will be giving d, u, v and w they will be giving u naught and theta will be giving out uh, 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 delta t ok. So, in the convection side we get u naught delta t by d. In the similar fashion in the conduction side uh, all the t's in the conduction terms gives rise uh, delta t into theta ok and x, y and z those give uh, delta square ok uh, d square rather d square. So, here you can find out that uh, if we equate the conduction and convection order then we can write down u naught delta t d is equals to alpha delta t d square. So, these are the uh, order uh, matching and if you do this type of order matching we can get the velocity scale u naught ok. So, velocity scale u naught is coming out to be after cancellation alpha by d. So, we have obtained what will be the velocity scale u naught for non dimensionalization of u v and w ok. Next uh, let us try to see now the uh, uh, form of uh, uh, energy equation. So, as we have equated this to these two sides, uh, so this will be becoming uh, 1 uh, that means u naught is chosen in such a fashion that these two coefficients will become 1. So, here in this side we have actually a total derivative of theta and in the right hand side we are having uh, del square theta. So, this is the energy equation we get ok uh, final form of the energy equation. Let us now see the momentum equations and to start with we will be seeing first the uh, momentum equation in the vertical direction that means z direction. So, in the z direction inertia term will be giving coefficient u square by d once again u square by d is coming from the uh, u, u, u w uh, or v w or w w side it is giving u square and x y z those can give out d. And in the same fashion w is giving 1 u naught and t is giving d by u naught. So, the coefficient comes out as u square by d ok. Uh, in the pressure gradient term we are having uh, p is giving out p naught and uh, uh, this uh, z is giving d ok. So, uh, here we are seeing uh, here we are seeing that this uh, pressure gradient terms gives minus 1 by rho naught into p naught by d ok my nc term uh, it will be giving you nothing but g beta delta t theta because we had over here uh, t minus uh, we had over here uh, uh, t minus let me show you the equation t minus t naught ok. So, t minus t naught will be giving you uh, uh, delta t uh, which is nothing but uh, t naught minus t i into uh, 
uh, theta. So, this buoyancy term we have written in this fashion and obviously, viscous term will be giving you nu uh, u naught by uh, d square. Remember uh, the equation whatever I have shown uh, for the uh, for the uh, momentum equations, uh, here we have divided all the equations by rho. Okay. So, this is actually part of your inertia term. So, rho into this is actually inertia. So, you have divided. So, here it got uh, rho naught and here mu by rho naught it is actually nu. Okay. So, uh, uh, we have obtained uh, this uh, uh, red momentum equation and if we try to now equate uh, actually the uh, this u naught square d into d square by uh, nu u square which is nothing but uh, inertia coefficient and viscous coefficient then we will be finding out it turns out to be after cancellation nothing but alpha by nu which is 1 by Prandtl number. Okay. So, here in this side we get 1 by Prandtl number if we equate this two. Okay. Uh, 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 here this u naught scale we have used if you see this u naught scale we have used which we have just determined uh, by equating convection and conduction orders. Okay. So, if you put the value of u naught then only it will be turning out to be 1 by Prandtl number. Okay. Now, let us try to find out what is P naught. So, to find out the P naught we equate the pressure and viscous term coefficient. So, if you see here the pressure term coefficient was uh, P naught by rho naught into d and viscous term coefficient uh, nu uh, u naught by d square. So, if you equate this two then we get the uh, term P naught which is nothing but rho naught nu alpha by uh, d square. Okay. So, we have got P naught earlier I have shown you what was the u naught. So, the scales for non dimensionalization we have uh, clearly identified okay. uh, as well as we have the uh, as well as we have the equations already the energy equation I have shown and we are now deriving the z momentum equation. Now, in the z momentum equation lastly let us see that what will be the uh, buoyancy term becoming. So, in the buoyancy term we are having g beta delta t as your coefficient and as uh, throughout this equation we are dividing by nu u naught by delta square. So, it will be nu u naught by delta square. So, buoyancy term coefficient will become if you reduce further by putting the value of u naught over here once again from the velocity scale. So, it will come out to be uh, g beta delta t d cube by nu alpha which is nothing but our Rayleigh number okay, which we have uh, discussed in the first lecture in the non-dimensional number field. Okay. So, this equation throughout we will be dividing by uh, nu u naught by d square. So, here we get coefficient to 1, here we get once again coefficient 1 as p naught we will be choosing in this fashion to cancel out all the terms. Okay. Here we will be getting Rayleigh number and here obviously we will be getting uh, uh, um, 1 by p r. Okay. So, let me show you. So, this uh, actually here we get p r. Okay. So, uh, this equation comes out to be 1 by p r d w del d w d t which is the total derivative of w. Okay. So, this whole term will be becoming total derivative of w and then minus del p del z plus delta square w plus Rayleigh number into theta this is the buoyancy term. Okay. So, this becomes my uh, z momentum equation. Uh, obviously, other momentum equations x and y momentum equations those will be very simple. Uh, in the similar way we can derive that these will be the x momentum equation and y momentum equation only the buoyancy term will be actually uh, absent in these cases. Okay. Uh, so, uh, after equations let us see the boundary conditions. So, at z equals to 0 that means bottom plate obviously, it will be giving rise no slip velocity condition. So, uh, u and v is actually 0 and no penetration is over here w equals to 0 and for theta uh, which is uh, non dimensionalized temperature you will find out this becomes uh, uh, t naught minus t naught uh, by t naught minus t 1. So, which is 0 and at z equals to 1 once again uh, no slip no penetration gives me u v w all are 0 and theta gives me uh, uh, t 1 minus t naught by t naught minus t 1 which is nothing but minus 1. Okay. So, uh, these boundary conditions and these equations we have to solve. 
Now, at the beginning, let us see the basic state that means whenever there is hydrostatic situation. So, in case of hydrostatic situation, we are having u v w is equals to 0. So, this is the initiation of the instability if there is uh, existing. Okay. So, we get u v and w is equals to 0 and uh, uh, from the steady state uh, um, things, we get the uh, energy equation is being changing. Let me show you the energy equation once again. So, this was the energy equation. So, right hand side we are having your uh, conduction term and in the left hand side we are having the convection term. Okay. So, in this case uh, whenever we are having hydrostatic situation you will be getting that we are having del theta del t is equals to 0. Okay. Rest other terms will become 0. Okay. So, whenever you have this one, so we get theta is actually a function of z, okay. theta is actually function of z. Okay. So, this is the steady state basic state uh, temperature profile. Okay. Then uh, from uh, x momentum, y momentum and z momentum equation as we are having these equations. So, you can find out that if u, uh, v and w those are 0, uh, uh, then ultimately in these equations we will be finding out x momentum, y momentum equation will be giving you only the pressure gradient terms are 0 and z momentum will be giving you pressure gradient term is equals to Rayleigh number into theta. Okay. So, uh, once we uh, integrate this one okay, as energy equation has given as energy equation has given uh, theta is actually a function of uh, z okay, from uh, this side as it is steady state. So, in case of steady state if we consider del theta by del t is equals to 0. So, in the energy equation we will be finding out total convection term actually goes to 0. So, if total convection term goes to 0 only we are left with the right hand side which is nothing but your uh, uh, conduction side. So, in the conduction side let us consider that cross wise and steam wise uh, conductions are actually uh, uh, 0 only the vertical conduction exists. So, and as we have already shown that theta is a function of z in case of steady state. So, only the last term will be remaining delta square theta del z square equals to 0. Okay. So, and once you integrate it two times then you will be getting theta is equal to c 1 z plus c 2. Okay. So, uh, uh, with uh, steady state as well as hydrostatic these two uh, consideration we have actually neglected the uh, uh, convection term. Okay. And as we have got also in steady state theta is a function of z uh, the uh, del square x and del square y term is becoming 0. So, only we are left with this del square theta uh, del z square. Okay. Now, if you put the boundary conditions as we are having at the uh, bottom plate and at the top plate, then we get this profile the value of C 1 and C 2 we can evaluate and we get theta is nothing but minus z. Okay. So, if we get theta is equals to minus z, so immediately we can put it over here in the z momentum equation reduce z momentum equation. So, we get del p del z is equals to r a uh, into minus z okay. and once if you integrate you can get the pressure which is nothing but minus r a z square by 2 plus c. Okay. So, this is the pressure field we have obtained and this is the temperature field for the basic state. Uh, uh, so, for the basic state we have obtained these two and uh, here from we can easily get once again that del p naught by del z is nothing but r a into theta naught. So, this we will be using for the uh, latter cases. So, this is very important relationship. Okay. Now, let me show you that if uh, there is requirement of stratification. So, definitely there will be some convection current generated and we have to actually perturb the flow. Okay. So, flow will be perturbed, but if uh, now if the flow is perturbed we need to study whether it is becoming steady once again or not. To uh, check that let us add some perturbation in the situation and let us try to see that what is the stability criteria for this. Okay. So, if the flow situation is satisfying that stability criteria then we will be uh, tending towards the stratification as I have shown in the figure uh, or otherwise there will be unstable convection cells. Okay. So, uh, let us see that after perturbation from the basic state we can get u is equals to basic state was 0. So, u equals to 0 plus u dash v equals to 0 plus v dash and w is equals to 0 plus w dash. Remember the basic state is actually hydrostatic. Okay. For, for the theta you see uh, for the basic state we had theta equals to theta naught z because we have shown that theta in case of steady and basic state hydrostatic case is actually a function of z. So, now after perturbation this is becoming theta naught plus theta dash. 
in a similar fashion let us see the uh, pressure uh, perturbation so in case of pressure perturbation earlier pressure was actually a function of z we have shown over here okay so uh, now we are giving p not z plus this perturbation p dashed so once you give this uh, um, uh, perturbations then we will be finding out that uh, we have separate sets of disturbance equations. So disturbance equation will be uh, once you uh, replace this w by w dash v by v dash and u by u dash theta by theta dash plus uh, theta naught p by p naught plus p dash in your momentum equations and energy equations and then subtract the basic state equations you will be getting the disturbed state equations. Okay. So, disturbed state equations will be always involved with the uh, perturb perturbed quantity that means this dashed quantities. So, you can get the continuity equation will be coming out like this. Then we are having the x momentum equation in the x momentum equation you see in the left hand side everywhere we are having dashed quantities okay? and in the right hand side we are having here in the dashed quantities here is in the dashed quantities as p is a function of uh, uh, p, p naught is, uh, is a function of z uh, so del del x of uh, p naught is actually 0. So, uh, that term we have not added over here okay? similarly for y direction so del del y of p naught uh, term is not coming over here. So, these two are the x and y momentum part of equations, okay, dis uh, disturbance equations. Next z momentum equation you see, so left hand side will be having the uh, con, uh, your uh, inertia term with the perturbed quantity and in the right hand side we are having del del z of p naught okay, and minus of del p dashed by del z. So, this term can we cannot cancel now because p naught is a function of z. Okay. Uh, for uh, Rayleigh number it will be uh, Ra into theta, so this theta will be theta naught plus uh, theta dashed will be uh, replacing next and uh, your uh, viscous term will be giving you del square w, w dashed. Okay. So, now let us put this Rayleigh number is equal Rayleigh number into theta is equal to Rayleigh number into theta dot plus theta dash temperature perturbation we have added over here and in case of del p naught del z we have put Ra theta naught which we have already shown you over here del p naught by del z is nothing but your R a theta derivative of this equation with respect to z. Okay. So, if you add that it becomes minus R a into theta naught. Okay. So, if we if we uh, cancel this R a into theta naught and R a minus R a into theta naught then my z momentum equation becomes like this. Okay. Energy equation in the other hand if you see left hand side we are having perturbed equation for uh, theta and but here we will be having two terms because theta uh, is actually function of z. So, we will be having this del theta naught del z term also present okay, apart from del theta dashed by del z term. Okay. Uh, so, uh, now here we know that del theta theta um, uh, order if you see over here theta was nothing but theta naught was nothing but minus z. So, if you uh, do this del theta naught by del z it will be minus 1. So, if you put that one over here, so you get this is minus 1, so this is minus w. Okay. So, this is my energy equation we have obtained. So, let us see once again uh, uh, the uh, disturbed or perturbed equation, but this time we will be assuming uh, linearized disturbed equation for small amplitude. Okay. So, for small amplitude if you consider wherever we are having multiplication of dash terms those we can uh, actually neglect. So, let us do that. So, this is the continuity equation first. In the uh, momentum equation equations you see uh, in the in the momentum equations here we had uh, the multiplication between dash terms. So, those can be actually uh, neglected as it is very small uh, amplitude of disturbance we have given. So, the uh, momentum equation in the left hand side we are having only the temporal derivative of the perturbed quantities uh, the spatial derivatives we have neglected. Okay. And rest equations remain same. So, this is x, y and z momentum equation and finally, this is my energy equation. Here also you see uh, u dashed into theta dash term, uh, u dashed in uh, v dashed into theta dash term and uh, w dashed into theta dash term in the convection side we have actually neglected. Okay. So, this is my energy equation and subsequently these are the boundary conditions. So, obviously, at uh, bottom plate we will be having all the perturbations uh, velocities equals to 0 due to no slip and no penetration, theta dash is equals to 0 okay, as theta was 0. So, theta dash is equals to 0 and at z equals to 1 we are having once again u dash v dash w dash is equals to 0 due to no slip and no penetration. But here uh, earlier theta was actually minus 1, but theta naught already has actually absorbed 
absorbed uh, that theta naught equals to minus 1. So, here we are having theta dash is equals to 0. Okay. So, these are the equations and these are the boundary conditions we are having for linearized disturbed equation. Now, let us consider that we are having 2D disturbance equation. Let us forget about this 3D nature of the equation. So, uh, uh, I am making the simplification over here. Let us consider this is 2D disturbance equation and uh, we are uh, assuming that any 3D disturbance can be converted into addition of many 2D uh, disturbances. So, with this assumption the 3D disturbance uh, actually we are converting into uh, 2D disturbance and here let us consider for 2D disturbance we are having only uh, u dashed and v dashed u dash and w dash v dash is equals to 0. So, once we put v dash is equals to 0 considering 2D disturbance and then let us try to do normal mode analysis. So, what is normal mode analysis? Any disturbance quantity u dash, v dash, theta dash and p dash remember uh, v dash we have actually uh, converted to 0 uh, can be written which is nothing a function nothing but a function of x, z and t can be written u cap of z e to the power i k x plus sigma t w cap z e to the power i k x plus sigma t like that we can write down. So, here is the z dependence, x dependence comes over here with i multiplication and t dependence comes over here with sigma multiplication, okay. where this k and sigma can be uh, a uh, real and complex com composition. So, this can be like this uh, sigma real plus sigma imaginary and k real plus k imaginary. Okay. Now, <laughs> to obtain temporal stability. So, if you put if you see these things uh, if uh, sigma r is actually becoming positive then with respect to time this will be taking exponential series exponential uh, growth. So, that means it will be uh, going towards uh, unstable zone. So, obviously, for temporal stability this sigma r this uh, real term in this uh, uh, all these uh, normal mode analysis requires to be less than 0 for becoming neutral we if we have sigma r equals to 0 it will not depend on the temp, uh, time. So, here uh, for stability criteria we have to have sigma r less than 0. In a similar fashion for stabil, uh, special stability we should have sigma i is equals to 0 or real because it is having i multiplication over here okay. uh, as well as for the uh, sorry uh, for sigma uh, we have to have sigma i equals to 0 or sigma real definitely as well as for special stability we have to have k i is equals to k i greater than 0. If k i greater than 0 then with multiplication of i into i it is becoming negative. So, negative of positive is becoming once again negative then it will be tending towards 0. So, uh, the uh, disturbance will damp down with respect to space. So, we will be having special stability. So, for special stability we require uh, k i greater than 0. So, let us try to put all these uh, normal mode analysis in our equations. So, in order to do so we will be going for uh, vorticity determination. So, for vorticity we are having uh, gamma dash we are having del u dash del z minus of del w dash del z. So, this is nothing but if you see from normal mode analysis and do the derivatives. So, it will become del u d u cap minus i k w cap e to the power i k x minus plus sigma t. Okay. So, this is becoming our vorticity. Now, uh, if you try to write down vorticity in this fashion. Okay. So, e to the uh, gamma of uh, z uh, into e to the power i k x plus sigma t. So, this gamma is becoming nothing but uh, actually gamma bar is nothing but becoming d u minus i k w okay, comparison between these two. Okay. Then uh, uh, let us uh, write down from continuity. So, if you remember our continuity equation, so continuity equation was uh, like this. So, if you put the value of u naught, u dashed, v dashed and w dashed in the form of your normal mode analysis. So, then ultimately we will be getting uh, equations like this from the continuity equation i k u bar plus uh, uh, d uh, w bar let us call this caps. So, i k u cap plus d w cap is equals to 0 remember the v dash term we have neglected okay. and then uh, for 2 d cases. Uh, so, we get over here what is u that is nothing but minus 1 by i k d u cap. Okay. So, uh, u cap is equals to minus 1 by i k d w cap. Now, uh, if we put this back in the uh, value of uh, gamma over here. Okay, so, we get gamma bar, gamma cap was actually d u cap minus i k w cap. So, if we put this uh, u cap value over here then we can get after simplification this gamma cap becomes minus of 1 by k d square minus k square into w cap. Okay. So, gamma cap has been found out in terms of w cap. 
सो लिटिल बिट ऑफ साइड चेंज विल बी गिविंग यू माइनस आई के गामा का पीज इक्वल्स टू डी स्क्वायर माइनस के स्क्वायर इन टू डब्ल्यू कैप ओके नाउ लेट अस सी माय एनर्जी इक्वेशन सो दिस वाज माय एनर्जी इक्वेशन इन द एनर्जी इक्वेशन इफ आई ट्राई टू पुट द नॉर्मल मोड एनालिसिस सो इट बिकम सिग्मा इन थीटा कैप माइनस डब्ल्यू कैप इज इक्वल्स टू डेल स्क्वायर विल बी ऑलवेज गिविंग यू डी स्क्वायर माइनस के स्क्वायर ओके सो डी स्क्वायर माइनस के स्क्वायर दैट वी हैव शोन ओवर हेयर डी स्क्वायर माइनस के स्क्वायर सो डी स्क्वायर माइनस के स्क्वायर इन थीटा कैप ओके सो दिस बिकम्स माई एनर्जी इक्वेशन and my momentum equations uh, x momentum equation uh, uh, will be uh, x momentum equation and z momentum equation because uh, uh, y momentum equation we need not to consider for 2d cases so those things if we do little bit of simplification so first let us do this del del z of first equation x momentum equation minus of del del x of second momentum equation to reduce some terms so we'll be getting uh, this type of equation where this is nothing but your uh, uh, gamma okay so we can put uh, 1 by pr del gamma dash del t minus of delta square gamma dash this term these two terms are cancelling minus of ra into del theta dash uh, del x okay so once you try to put the normal mode analysis over here in this equation it comes out 1 by pr sigma gamma cap is equals to d square minus k square gamma cap minus of i k r a theta cap okay so if you try to multiply uh, this equation with uh, i minus of i into k so ultimately you will be getting sigma by pr into i minus of i k gamma cap is equals to d square minus k square minus of i k gamma cap minus of k a k square into r a theta cap okay so from this equation let us multiply both sides with minus i k so once you see this minus i k gamma cap already we have proved this is nothing but actually uh, uh, delta square minus d square minus k square into w cap so let us put that term over here okay so this minus i k gamma cap is nothing but d square minus k square into w cap so this side also we can put the same thing so this becomes d square minus k square into w cap okay so uh, finally uh, this equation is coming out to be d square minus k square uh, whole square so this this whole square will be coming w cap minus of k square r a theta cap this term is equals to sigma by pr uh, into d square minus k square into w cap so this is becoming my momentum equation now and already the energy equation i have shown you energy equation comes out to be like this so that equation let us write down over here so this is my uh, energy equation okay so we have two equations now which uh, needs to be solved uh, uh, for uh, known value of ra prandtl number and your k okay so ra prandtl number and k if those are known then ultimately you can get this type of graph okay so here you can find out that below a certain uh, level of reynolds num uh, rayleigh number everything will be stable okay so uh, once you have the perturbation that will come back to the stratification but above a certain rayleigh number you will find out that these situations are actually leading towards uh, uh, instability so the zone will become uh, um, unstable okay so rayleigh taylor instability uh, um, will uh, rayleigh bernard instability will pick up okay and this is the boundary between these two which is nothing but neutral curve okay of linear stability analysis so remember here we have done the linear stability analysis so uh, this is the neutral curve as i have said and this neutral curve actually depends on the value of prandtl number whatever you are entering okay and uh, as i have said that below a certain critical uh, uh, rayleigh number always the, uh, we will be having uh, hydrostatic state or stable state we will come back to hydrostatic state or stable state above which you will be getting the instability so uh, this is related to uh, rayleigh bernard convection so let us summarize so what we have understood in this uh, um, lecture we have understood what are the governing equations for rayleigh bernard convection so first the basic state Uh, so basic state gives me theta dot and p not in terms of theta not and p not in terms of z okay and disturbed state we have got two equations okay two equations like this uh, in terms of uh, w cap and theta cap so w cap and theta cap this will lead to eigen value problem okay uh, where i can find out what is the value of uh, uh, sigma r and uh, um, uh, ki for stable situation if stable if uh, sigma r is actually less than 0 then we will be having temporal stability and if ki is greater than 0 we will be having uh, spatial stability okay so this we have seen for the uh, stability criteria okay 
So, after this let me test uh, what you have understood in this lecture. So, uh, which configuration has stable density field? We are having four answers heated from top, heated from bottom, both are stable or none are stable. So, okay. so this we have shown you in the uh, second slide of this lecture. So, obviously correct answer is heated from top we will be having the always hydrostatic case. So, there is no uh, uh, instability will be generating. Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, next one is system will be always stable for above a critical number below a critical number uh, at any positive value of uh, uh, Rayleigh number and for all Rayleigh number. Okay. So, critical above a critical Rayleigh below a critical Rayleigh at any positive value of Rayleigh or for all Rayleigh the system will be stable. So, obviously, in the last slide uh, we have shown you the uh, Rayleigh number uh, curve um, and we have shown the criteria that uh, below a critical Rayleigh number always the system will become stable. So, this is the correct answer. Uh, then third one basic state pressure gradient in axial direction uh, will be becoming minus z by r a minus r a uh, minus r a by z uh, minus r a z r a number into z. So, this already we have shown pressure gradient basic state means p naught. So, p naught actually is actually equal to minus r a z. So, this is the correct answer. Okay. So, I think all of you have got the right answers in these three questions. Uh, so, with this I am uh, ending this lecture. In our next lecture we will be discussing about heat transfer with phase change. Okay. So, uh, if you have any query related to this uh, lecture or any other lecture in general please keep on posting in the discussion forum. Thank you.